Hi, it's Professor Ryan from Knights Around the Table. What is a rondelle? Today on... Board Games 101! Okay, so first pronunciation. You can say rondelle or you can say rondel, but almost all of the English speakers I've ever met have said rondelle. It's your choice, doesn't really matter. What is it? All it is is it's a circle, and this is a very loosely defined thing. There's no set in stone way to do a rondelle in a game, but it's a circle, uh, let's say, that has you know the different player pawns on it, and in each wedge of the pie, there's a different action that you can take. So this one's like get wood, this one's build a haberdashery. Those are interesting, but I think the most interesting action on this whole wheel for me to take is this one, which is the switch pants with another player action, because I came to Game Night uh, foolishly wearing my really constrictive tight leather hairband pants, and I noticed across the table that Dave is wearing a, a loose fitting pair of jogging pants, which I'd really like to swap with him. So I'm interested in that space, but I'm on this space. So maybe the way that this particular rondelle works is that if I want to take this action, I got to move there and to move there, I have to pay. So I have to pay one, two bucks to switch pants with another player. That is a good deal and I will take that any day. So I'm going to pay my two bucks. I'll move my pawn over here, switch pants with another player. And now I'm out of those hot leather pants and I'm into a nice airy pair of jogging pants. Feels a lot better. However, on my next turn, I notice that sitting next to Dave is Pam, and Pam not only has the track pants on, but they've got like a giant hole in the crotch, which allows that natural ventilation. That looks even more comfortable than the pair I swapped for. So I would like to switch pants with another player a second time. However, I'm already on this space. And in this particular implementation of a rondelle, in order to pick the space again, I would have to pay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bucks to go all the way around the circle to take this action again. So what a rondelle does in this particular implementation is it discourages me uh, from taking the same action multiple times in a row. It, it, I have to sort of like spin around the circle doing other things before I can do this one thing. Like I said, this is just one example. It's not the. It's not a hard and fast rule at all. This mechanic is not set in stone because with game design, it's constantly evolving and we're constantly finding out uh, new and better ways to have fun. So if you see a, a wheel in a game where you move around and maybe take actions or do stuff, that's going to be called a rondelle. It's really up to the game designer to come up with the interpretation of how that rondelle works. So we can talk exemplars. One of the most popular and famous games with a rondelle in it is called Trajan, but I can't say much about it because I haven't played it. My first exposure to the rondelle mechanic or a rondelle style mechanic uh, is probably one of the most unique implementations out there in board game world. It's a game called Soulkin, the Mayan calendar. And that one's really cool because you're putting workers on the wheel, fine, and the wheel acts kind of like a conveyor belt because it physically moves. They're, they're, the wheels are all interlocking gears. There's five of them, I believe, on the board. And when you turn one, all the rest of them turn on the board and your pawn moves with the rondelle. There are different actions printed outside the rondelle, outside the gear, and the longer your worker stays on the gear, the sweeter the action spaces get. And it's when you take your worker away that you get to do the thing. Now, if you do a little bit of research on rondelles, like I did, uh, you might notice that they're uh, often associated with a game designer named Mac Gertz uh, out of Germany, I believe. And that's because he didn't come up with the idea of the rondelle. The rondelle is a very, very old uh, game mechanic idea, but I, I think that he helped popularize it because he did a whole slew of games with a rondelle mechanic. He did one called Imperial, and he did one called Hamburgum and NTK. I haven't played any of those. The only Matt Gerritz game I've played is called Concordia, which hilariously isn't actually a rondelle game. Or is it? So this is interesting. You could have a Rondell game that, that doesn't smell like a Rondell game at first blush. But what's interesting about Concordia is that in that game you have a hand of, I don't know, six or seven cards, and each card has an action on it, and you play a card and take the action. Well, now that card's out of your hand, you can't play it anymore. You have to pick a different one and take that action, and pick a different one, take that action. You can't retake these actions that you've played until you play the card that lets you scoop everything back up again. 
So that looks pretty much like what we described here, right? It's not a it's not a circle on the board, but it, it you know it's kind of a cyclical action taking kind of thing. So I would argue that you know it's kind of like mechanic wise like a spiritual successor to a rondelle. So you don't have to be uh you don't have to have a, a like a circle a geometric circle drawn on the board for a game to have a rondelle mechanic. Somebody on YouTube, one of my viewers, thank you very much. I didn't look up your name to credit you, but one of you pointed out to me that Great Western Trail by Alex Fister is a rondelle game. And I thought that's weird. It's not a circle. It's a big snaky path that you move your cowboy up to and at the very end you sell your cows and then you loop back to the beginning. Well, that's a rondelle, isn't it? Yeah. So you can like it doesn't have to be a, a drawn circle on the board for it to be rondelle. So other examples you can have a, a there's a rondelle game called Aura at Labora and and in that one you can you can, I think the rondelle represents time and you can race ahead in time, but if to get to an action that you want to do, but if you do that, you are, and I think you're f maybe forcing a season or a harvest, but in doing that, you're missing a bunch of other good stuff in between. It's an interesting way to give interesting choices to players and to um, limit their choices unless they want to spend money and then they want to be at a disadvantage to the other players. It's, it's neat. All kinds of implementations all over the board. Uh, of course, for my TAs in the room, I always ask, what is your favorite implementation of the Rondell mechanic idea? Uh, tell me which game that you like that has it. I, I probably haven't played it because I don't have a lot of experience with Rondells. If you want to tell me in person, you can use the link below to jump into the Discord server and chat with me there and all the other fine folks who talk about and play board games all the time. Thank you so very much for watching this one, and I'll see you next time on... Board Games 101! Knights Around a Table is the only place you can earn your PHB in board games. Knights Around a Table is not an accredited educational institution. Really? I thought we had that set up in Uruguay. To see a full course syllabus, go to knightsaroundatable.com. To fund an endowment, visit me at my Patreon page. And as usual, click the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications when new course materials are available. If somebody returns my chalk, none of us have to speak to the Dean.